Welcome back inmates. Today I'm going to show you the differences between the two most popular premium wireless phone chargers. The Quadlock wireless charging head and from Denali and Ram the wireless charging phone mount. Now it's important to know that I've got no affiliation with Quadlock whatsoever. Now I actually have this exact product on my bike. This is just an empty box. So I can't get discounts, I can't buy it in bulk or anything like that. If you want the Quadlock, I'll put links down below so you can go direct to Quadlock, which sounds crazy because I get nothing from it at all. But if you want the Quadlock set up, then there'll be links down below so you can get that direct from Quadlock. Now, of course, I think we all know that I do have some form of affiliation with Denali. Denali have partnered up with Ram Mount to bring you this really cool wireless phone charging system. So let's get started. I'm going to show you my bike with the quad lock setup that I've got and the bits that are necessary to actually get this working on your bike. Okay, so let's take a quick look at my bike. So you can, first of all, you can see this on my bike. Now, if you want to, you could take the back of the wireless head and plug it directly into the USB port on the front of your bike. If you've got a slightly older bike, when I say older, we're talking pre-2021, pre so like a 2020 or a 2019 model or older, you'll have a DIN plug and then you can obviously buy a USB or a double USB DIN plug to put into the bike and then you can plug your quad lock wireless head into that. Now, if you want a really professional installation where you can't see all the wires, you, have to, you don't have to keep plugging and unplugging stuff and you haven't got wires trailing across your handlebar, well then you need, or you could use these three products here. Now, this is what I have on my bike. Now, there are, I appreciate there are other products out there, I stock these products, so links down below. If you want to get these for your bike to wire up your quad lock wireless charging head in the most professional way you can, well then I really strongly advise you getting hold of this. This is a 3,300 milliamp USB charger. Now what I like about the Optimate product is you have waterproof plugs both ends. So you don't have to worry about water ingress at any time, regardless of the weather. To connect it all up to the battery, we then need this product here, which is basically a battery lead with the relevant plug on the end to plug into the charger. And then here, now this is a splitter cable. You might not need this, but what this enables me to do is plug in my quad lock wireless charging head and also have a spare lead available to power up my GoPro. Now the really, really clever bit about this product here, I don't know how it does it. This is Optimate's field of expertise but you don't have to wire this into a switched live. Somehow it knows when the bike is turned on. So when you wire this all up, it will not work until the engine is running. I don't know whether they do that through vibration or but from the engine or whether it's to do with a slight drop in amps coming from the battery so it knows it's been fired up. And obviously when you turn the bike off, it senses the change in amps or voltage. But this will only charge your wireless, it'll only charge your phone and charge your GoPro when the engine is running and you'll get a certain amount of time of use after you switch the engine off as well because it senses the amount of volts in the battery to make sure it doesn't drain it so it switches it off. If you connect it all up with, with these items directly to your battery, literally in this order, from the battery to the charger to the splitter to the quad lock in that order and that will get you all up and running with this not being plugged into one of the usb sockets next to your tft screen and if you want to and if you haven't already yet i also stock the automate 4 canvas edition chargers these are the chargers that plug directly into your dim plug on your bike However, if you don't want to plug it into the DIN plug, you can just put it directly to the battery. It comes with a lead in there where you can plug it directly to the battery. Links down below. I've got loads of these in stock. Remember, if the website says it's in stock, we, we hold inventory here on the shelves. If, if we don't have stock, it will say, currently out of stock, more on the way, and you can back order if you like. Okay, so let's quickly take the seat off. Okay, so you've got the Optimate USB charger here. So that comes from the battery. And then this, this plug here comes from this Optimate. That's part of this Optimate. Then if you look here, 
This is the actual splitter itself plugged into the back end of this Optimate. And I've got one wire coming here going to this, which is for my GoPro. As you can see, what, this is what I love about the Optimate products, I was saying earlier, is that you can just unplug this, plug in your USB, and that provides you a nice weatherproof seal. I wouldn't say it's waterproof, but it's certainly weatherproof. And then when it's not in use, you can just plug in the cap back on top again. And then the other side of that splitter runs around to this plug just here, which is then plugged into another USB lead. And that is the USB lead that comes with my quad lock wireless charging head. So when I turn the bike on, if you look at the Optimate, it's got a red X flashing. It basically means it's not charging. But as soon as I power that up, you'll see it starts working. So let's turn the engine on. I don't know whether you can hear me or not. So you can see the power here. And when we look at the quad lock wireless charging head, that is also blue. Now, when I turn the engine off, as you can see, the three hour light is flashing, which basically means it will stay on for three hours or it will turn off if it senses the voltage dropping too much in the battery where so straight away, because I can tell you right now, I haven't had my bike plugged into an Optimate. As you can see, it's already flashing red because the battery voltage is, is quite low because I, I don't ride my bike as much as I would like to <laughs> and I haven't had it plugged in. So that's the all now powered off. So this is how I've got my quad lock wireless charging head all wired up. So I haven't got any loose wires trailing around my TFT screen. It's all hardwired in under the seat. Looks a bit messy, maybe. I think it's actually a very, very neat job considering I've got two can smarts wired into this bike. And with the amount of lights and the horn and the dash cam, this is pretty tidy indeed. Right, so let's put the lid back on this. Right, let's get these off the desk. Now let's look at the RAM wireless charging head with a Denali can smart connection. Now this is a lot faster. So everything you get in here, and if you choose to have the mounting kit, so when you go on the website, you'll have the choice of adding these. Now you don't have to add these. If, you've, if you know the RAM product, they have probably thousands of different applications of how you can mount things onto your bike. But we had to make a decision about what we're gonna do. I didn't wanna be um, stocking thousands of different RAM mount accessories. So all I've done is I've bought in loads of a particular um, mount. So I bought in the RAM B231ZU and the short arm RAM B201U. A. So if you opt to have these, then you'll be able to link this up directly onto your handlebar like I'm gonna show you now, but you don't have to add these on the website. You can leave them off if you wish. So this is just an empty box. Let's get the goods. So this is the main thing. It's bigger than the quad lock. Not, not horrendously bigger. Now I've always been a bit against this sort of style grip because I always thought to myself, well, the phone's gonna fall out of that, isn't it? But is it? <laughs> because I'm actually very, very impressed with how it holds it in and how easy it is to get the phone in there. So although the quad lock wireless charging head is a very neat design, I've never actually been able to master it perfectly, getting it on there every time. So if you've got a quad lock, you'll know what I mean. You've got to get the angle. If I show you the back of my phone case, you've got to get that angled perfectly onto the, the mount to then twist it on. And then if you wanted it in landscape mode, you've got to get your fingers around the back of it to push the locking mechanism uh, away so you can then spin it into landscape mode and then it locks into place. Once it's on, it's fantastic. I'm not making out quad lock to be bad. It's really, really good. I'm very happy with my quad lock. But if this was available at the time I fitted my quad lock, I probably would have thought twice and maybe I would have gone for this. But because it's already on my bike, I'm not saying it's not good enough because it is good enough but it's not good enough for me to just throw that away or get rid of that and change it over for this. 
But if this was available at the same time as I was looking, I probably would have fitted this to my bike. Plus it's supposed to be faster charging. Ram really bang on about this QI wireless charging technology. It's probably just a name for the same sort of thing that Quadlock have got. I, I'm not too sure, but this is stuff you can look into yourself to find out is it actually a much um, faster charge than the quad lock. All the specifications are on the website, so if you click on the link down below to this, you can read up everything on how this charges. It's also intuitively knows what type of phone you've got, not down to the point it knows exactly what brand of phone you have, but it, it knows exactly what uh, ampage it should be charging your phone at, which is pretty clever stuff. So if you've got one that can charge at 10 watts, then it, it will do that. Uh, but if you've got a phone that only charges, it's got an output of five watts, well then it will stick to the five watts. So it won't do any damage to your phone. So to get this in here, it's a simple case of just popping it in like that. And that, believe me, is actually strong enough. But if you're still not happy with that, it comes with this rubber tether, which you put on the back as quickly as that. That has now made this super strong to the point where it's actually a lot harder to put on. And so it's got this extra rubber on the back. So with that extra rubber strap, it just really holds the phone in there nice and tight. <laughs> Actually to the point, I'm struggling to get it out of the holder. Um, so let me just take that off for now. But look how easy, quick and easy that is to take on and off. But it's a case of you wouldn't need to take it on and off. You either use it with it on and leave it on all the time, or you take it off and store it somewhere safe. You don't have to take it on and off constantly, so it's not the sort of thing you're going to lose. First and foremost, you get full instructions. So this is really, really easy to actually put this all together. But I'm just going to show you how easy it is and what you get in the box. So you get this. Oh, I also want to mention on the end of here, you've got a USB plug. So if you wanted to, you could plug this directly into the USB port on your bike. You don't have to go through a can smart. You don't have to wire it directly to your battery. You can literally go straight into a USB port if you've got one. But the really good thing is there's an on off button. How cool is that? So this on off button, if you think you're using too much power and you don't want to be, uh, you don't want this to be drawing power for whatever reason, your phone's fully charged. I don't know, it's your call. If you want to turn it off, you just turn it off and there's a little light on the side which goes uh, on and off to indicate whether there's power going to the charger. So that switch there, actually, I do like that. And I would like that on my quad lock, I've got to be honest. So this cable here, this is the cable which is going to plug into this USB plug here. So you plug that one into this side here. And to make that waterproof, they supply this stretchy rubber sleeve. So all you do is stretch this over the top, plug it in, and then pull it back over the top. And it makes a nice weatherproof seal all, or, all around both sides of the male and the female USB plug. Pretty, pretty good. I like that a lot. I suppose that's instead of what I've just shown you with the Optimate plugs. And that's the reason why I stock the Optimate cables with those plugs, because we can eliminate the weather. This is the item which you plug into the EasyCan circuit. Make sure you don't forget to change that circuit. You program it to be an accessory because it might be set up as a light. It might be set up as heated gear or something. So make sure the circuit you plug this into is switched to an accessory and then you can configure whether you want it to uh, turn off after 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, it's up to you. With this particular phone charger, this will come on when you turn the bike on. It, it, it doesn't need the engine to be running. So it will take power from the bike, from the battery, through the easy can, the can smart, <laughs> um, just with the ignition turned on. So it might be handy if you want to set that timer so you know it definitely switches off. You can have it switching off either instantly as soon as you turn the bike off or you can set a delay on there up to 30, 40, I think it's up to a minute these days. And then the other end of this cable you've got another USB socket with a weatherproof plug so if it's not in use you can close that plug down, open it up, this one goes into here and that is your complete circuit. All right. Obviously we'd uncoil these as 
based on what bike you're plugging this into and how much how much harness you you need as you can see there's plenty of harness for it to stretch right across the, the longest bike all right so this bike here i've got a spare circuit on there uh, the customer's literally picking it up in the next oh he's actually due here now um, so i need to quickly show you i'm going to quick plug it into a spare circuit which he wants set up for his heated gear so we're going to plug it in change it to accessory and so you can see exactly how this works. So let's quickly get, not, get this on the bike before it arrives. Oh, very quickly, this wire here, you don't need it if you are wiring it into a can smart, but if you're not gonna go far a can smart or an easy can, you wire this directly to the battery. You've got a fuse, uh, a two amp fuse inside here. And on, on the other end of here, we have got the Denali MT plug, so we can plug it directly into the plug on there so instead of going to the to, to the easy can or the can smart we take it straight from the battery like so but bear in mind you have to remember to turn it on and off at the switch if you decide to go down that path otherwise you're going to drain your battery right let's get it on there right i timed that really really badly because the customer has just picked up his bike but we just had another customer drop off his bike so we're going to pop his one in here in, into place and we're going to quickly install the RAM wireless phone charger onto this R1250 GS, which is absolutely stunning. You've got to take a look at, look at the exhaust. We've already fitted some bits on this bike in the past. So he's got a very nice Akrapovich exhaust on here, which sounds awesome. Have a listen to that. <laughs> Now, funny enough, this customer's already got the quad lock on his bike. Now, if you, if you look here, he's got it wired up to a USB port at the front of his bike. Because on these modern, on, on these new 21 bikes, you get a single USB socket anyway. He's changed that and put in the double plug USB, which link down below, I sell those as well. Uh, so he's got two USB ports on the front, but this is basically what the quad lock looks like. And it's also what the RAM would look like on your bike if you wired it directly up to the front. Obviously you've got a lot of excess wires. We can't neatly channel it into this, this OEM harness here and run it under the tank. So, and don't forget, if you want to wire it in under the tank, like I showed you how I've done it on my bike, if you've got a GS or a GS Adventure, then please click on the link down below so you know exactly how to strip your bike down. Don't be scared of taking your bike apart because with me, I will show you exactly how to take it apart screw by screw so you can get it into the perfect state to wire all of your wires along the OEM harness path and then put the tank back on and put the fairings back on it's a very enjoyable experience so if you want to know how to do that then have a look at those videos that i made previously last year more videos on that sort of thing will be coming out on the k1600 the r1250 rt the f850 the f750 f850 F adventure I, I will be doing all of them eventually i'm going to whip off this quad lock it's on a very very quick and easy mechanism just here so instead of the the bar clamp which i supply in my kit He's got um, a, a round ball fitted to his handlebar clamp just there. So we're gonna use that for this. But if you wanted to, you can use the clamp which comes in the fitting kit, which fits to, to the actual handlebar itself anywhere along here. You can put it in the middle, you can put it at the side, and you can position your RAM phone charger however you want. So let's just take this off. As you can see, we've got the actual phone charger fitted on the handlebar. We've got I've, uh, already connected all the wiring within the loom. So you've got a nice, easy access switch 
right here at the front if you ever wanted to cut the power to it. Now what we'd ideally do is take all the fairings off, take the tank off, pull the wiring in underneath the tank, under the seat to the back and connect it straight up to the easy cam. But for today, we're just gonna connect it straight up to it. So if I take off the back of this customer's bike, remember how to do, that's it. Now he's got his can smart just here. He's already got the blue, yellow and white harnesses being used for the lights, the horn and the rear brake lights. So I've got the red circuit here available, which we're gonna plug the harness into just so you can see this all working. Okay, so starting with the USB lead at the front. So bearing in mind this would go under the tank. This is the piece that goes underneath the bike. So I'm going to plug this into the USB socket coming out the back of the RAM phone charger. And I'd also be putting a weatherproof sleeve over that connection. This would then run underneath and plug into this socket here, which would be under the seat somewhere in a, in a dry location. And then as you can see, I've got, so, I've got loads and loads of excess harness here. And then we plug this directly into the can smart. Right, now that's all wired in. It's a case of just turning it on. Now, as soon as I turn it on, if you come around this side, you can see we've got a red light, it flashes green, it goes back to red. I'm assuming the reason it's gone to red is because there's no phone in there. So if I put my phone in there, it's now gone green, which is pretty cool. So that is now charging right now. So I'm very happy with that. And the other great thing is, if for any reason you want to turn it off, just go to the on off button and turn it off and it just cuts the power to it at all so it's not draining any power from your battery. Turn it back on, goes red to green, it's now charging again. So the engine's not running, but obviously it's charging it because it works differently to how the Optimate USB charge, charger works on my bike. Turn the ignition off. And um, I set a 10 second accessory timeout on the can smart. You can set it to whatever you want. You can set it to zero. So this will turn off in 10 seconds. It's just gone off now. So out of the two, which one do you prefer? So if you want to, if you want to be charging your phone via the quad lock side of things, then just nip over the quad lock and start filling your basket and get your quad lock sorted. But as far as the actual getting the power to your wireless head charger, well then the Optimate products I have here is ideal for that. It's what I needed for my own application. So I've got those here, plenty of those on the shelf. Um, but if you like the look of the very quick and easy Ram Denali combo, well then I've got loads of those in stock as well. I ordered them months ago. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you've got any comments or any questions, then leave them down below. Until the next video, stay safe behind bars.